Hi everybody, this is Osprey from MyTruckCoach.com and in this video we're going to take a look at some of the uh, hottest stocks from uh, Friday. Okay, yeah, from the last trading day of 2017, Friday, December the 29th. So congrats everybody, it was a great year. Uh, thank you very much for uh, viewing the videos this year and I look forward to a very good and profitable 2018. And yeah, first up is KOSS. So yeah, it, it closed up today uh, 88 percent um you know uh, or it closed up a uh, hundred and fourteen percent and at 88 uh you know so it was the big winner today and then and then it, it closed up at 88 on rsi fasto is hitting here at 77 sitting that 80 uh, overbought power zone yeah so so the big move today was was the the break above all the moving averages you know it broke out above the middle bollinger band the 50 100 200 and 300 day simple moving averages today's candle did close well above the upper bollinger band which is down here at two. 30. You can see there was an upper wick on today's candle, you know, so there was some profit taking off of high of day. If today's candle, if on Monday the candles do work back into the bands, EMA4 down here will be the first support level. And you can see just below that is the 300 day simple moving average at 198. That will be the big level to hold. Um, check out there. There's a PSR bull flip. Notice that that uh, KOSS ha has very low average daily volume, and so today there's giant volume. So uh, yeah, just keep in mind when the volume dries up, uh, you know it can be uh, tough to sell. So if you look here at the uh, daily chart here, at, at, uh, further out, um, you're going to see the um, where it came up and hit the key uh, resistance levels. So uh, it, it came up and uh, hit up here um, at, at the uh, high close from back in November the the October November uh, run okay so so back here in October it had made a giant run and then the high close was up here at about 320 and so that's going to be the big level to break it's going to have to get above that level to head higher if you look here it has uh, done what we call filled the jar you know it came down came all the way back up notice how it took uh, you know months and months and months and months to come all the way down here and it made it made the whole retrace and on one big move and so um, it has to get above 320. Fail to break 320, that's going to signal a double top. And if it can get above 320, then you're looking at a potential run to up here at 370. Uh, that, that's up here at the uh, the open on this candle from this uh, big move up in October. So, so you know, it hit up here close to 370. It hit that 360 level, and, and then it pulled back, and then, and then it pulled back below 320. So if you see it fail to break 320, like I said, you could see it uh, pull back into the bands, which is down there at, at 230. And, and then I'll show you, uh, you know, this is the, the big resistance level that it's hitting. Well, when a stock's breaking out on the daily chart, you need to look at the weekly chart to find the next resistance levels. And, and uh, yeah, you could see here also, uh, yeah, if, uh, yeah, yeah, you can see here that, that when it hit um, today or this week, it, it broke above major uh, levels on, on the weekly chart as well. And, and so you can see it got above the 50, the, the 100, the 200, and then it temporarily broke the 300-week moving averages. These are all uh, the, the the moving averages it actually started uh, the, the week below the middle Bollinger Band, which is the 20 week moving average. And so this was a huge move this week above a bunch of major levels. You know, it's hitting this 2016 high close, which is up here at, at, at around 314, 315. And that's from October. And, and so notice how, how it hit that and the 300 uh, week simple moving average and pulled back. And so that, that was a red flag. It needed to stay above that for the week. So next Next week it has to close above the 300 week moving average or that's going to signal consolidation and you could see it pull back down and check out where the 200 week moving average is at 230 that is the same level as you know down here near uh, EMA4 at 230 so 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 basically you're looking at that as the big level if it fails to break you know if it fails to get above 314 you know you could see a big drop down to 230 okay let's look at LTEA congrats everybody there was nice follow through today we posted the uh, that this was set up for a bounce and then uh yeah it had that nice bounce yesterday and then uh you know so we were looking for the you know we we, we were you know just pulling back we were looking for a bounce off of the the 200 and 300 day simple moving averages you know it held that on, on the 27th and then yesterday it had a nice bounce and it formed 
bullish hair me reversal pattern and so this is the pattern here and today that pattern was confirmed and so uh, yeah so that was a nice move and notice that there was also a close above the pink line which is EMA 4 at 475 so very bullish move there what it needs to do now is uh, break above the upper Bollinger Band and the closing price here on the uh, what is that the 21st and so if it can, if it can close, close above both levels it could turn 6 into support then, then you have the closing price up here remember the close on a black candle is below the uh, this is the open this is the close and then it'll be putting seven on deck if it fails to get through six it could be a temporary top as long as the candles are riding EMAs four and eight support higher th th there's uh, more upside potential if it drops below EMAs four and eight that's when you're you know it could see it cooling down and then it has to hold that 200 and 300 day simple moving averages if it doesn't you know there's a gap that we were talking about and the bottom of the gap is way down here at the top of this candle okay so let's look at uh, QIWI okay so this stock is really heating up it, it closed up 14% today it made a giant move it had a huge volume okay so check out the volume spike just a giant volume spike first off look at RSI it's at 67 so you know this thing this stock has ran up into the 80s before on RSI uh, on this previous big run so keep that in mind um, look at the volume uh, you know, th this is a thinly traded stock. It had huge volume today, and so it had big volume yesterday as well. And it heated up on that break above the middle Bollinger Band. You know, back um, on the uh, it looks like what is that the 20th? Um, it closed above the middle Bollinger Band here, the dotted purple line, and then it pulled back. And then yesterday it closed back above that level. Many times when you see that second close above, it's it's a signal. Okay, it's trying to turn that level into support. And when, when stocks are in a downtrend and they get back above that middle Bollinger Band, that's when new uptrends could begin and so uh, today there was huge follow-through uh, notice there was a gap up open above the the 50-day simple moving average currently at 1577 that's the green line and then it ended up running above the 100 and 300 day simple moving averages so those are the key levels to hold the gold and blue line basically 1650 needs to stay above that level it's currently hitting resistance here um, you know it from uh, the the recent high close in November and, and then it has the 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 uh, high close from October you know that's a, that was a, a, a tough, this is a tough little break at 17.50. And then just above that is eight at 18. It's the September high close and, and the 200-day simple moving averages. So this is a really big resistance zone. And then if you go back here into uh, March, you can see this is the March and April resistance zone. You know, that's where the uh, red lines are. So this is a big level to get through. You know, it's back at this uh, March and, and April level because if you, if you could see down here, it, it came down and it bounced off of that February support level but that back in February you know it was running and then it pulled back and it had a bounce uh, you know and then it took off running in March and that's the same level that it held in December when it finally when it pulled back it finally found some support here and, and so it, you know it made a multiple bottoms at, at this level this 1375 level and then now it's pushing higher if it fails to get above 18 that's going to signal consolidation you can see the, the candles work back into the bands you really want to see that 50 and 100 day simple moving average turn into support once it's above that that 200 day simple moving average then it'll be ab above all the moving averages and that's what happened when it was back here and it was running hard it was riding EMA's 4 and 8 support above all the moving averages above the middle Bollinger Band and what we call the upper uh, the bullish upper Bollinger Band channel and so so that's what bulls are looking for here they, they're looking for another push um, you know if you can get above 18 you're looking at 20 which is the uh, high close from August okay let's look at VTVT okay very, and very nice follow through again uh, you know it closed up 8 percent you know it, it, some, some people are always looking for the 80 percent gain or the 20 you know the big home runs but you know base hits do add up you know so so just keep that in mind and, and so uh you know there's the rule of uh 10 and 7 if you have a 10 percent gain for seven days in a row and you roll roll it over each day you have a hundred percent gain at the end of seven days so so just keep that in mind the base hits add up that's the point i'm trying to make here and, and so the, 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 this had nice follow through today it closed yesterday above the middle Bollinger Band. Noticed it was in a big downtrend. It closed below in October. It was writing EMA's 4 and 8 support higher. You know, it was struggling to get back above that level. Yesterday, it finally broke above. And then it, and then notice that all the moving averages are converged at the same level. Notice how we have the green, gold, blue, and red lines. On all my charts, the moving averages are all the same level. So if you watch them, you will uh, you, you will know that, that uh, you know, th these are always going to be the same levels. Makes it easy for the analysis. And so, so basically, it needs to stay above that. 
that 100-day simple moving average at 548. That's the gold line. If it can hold that level and then needs to break 620, you know, that, that was a, a support level from back here in November. You know, what was support becomes resistance. If it can get above that, the, the real big level is up here in October, which is the high close at about 780. Okay, so uh, yeah, fail to break above 620. The candles could work back in advance. It needs to stay above this cluster of moving averages. If it can stay above them, the, the, the chart will be very bullish and the signal it wants to head higher. Notice that there's really big volume behind the move. The, the one red flag is there was a, 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 a spike down in accumulation distribution. Notice that there, there, you know, there was some uh, profit taking. And then notice how there was just a slight uptick on uh, CMF, even though it pushed higher. That long upper wick. You know, that shows profit taking and possible dilution. You know, they could be uh, selling shares in the run. You know, anytime, you you know, that's that's the thing. You know, when you have penny stocks, you know, they, they, they uh, many times need to sell shares for financing. Okay, let's look at BCLI. Okay, so it closed in the bull zone here on RSI. So now it's back above 50. It, it, it's at, at 56. And, and then uh, this is kind of similar to that last chart where, where, where the, the moving averages are clustered together. You have the, uh, the 200 the 100 and the 50 day simple moving averages all together. Oh, look, you have a uh, uh, red, gold, and green. And, and so, yeah, so so basically it needs to break above. If they can get above that 200 day simple moving average at 413, close above that level, that would be very bullish. And then the next big level to break is going to be four, around 440. Uh, th that's the high close in October. Notice that it had this uh, sideways channel. And so it, it channeled out for August, September, October, November. And then it finally broke down in December where it found support down here at 295. Notice there was a P star bull flip today. And then similar to the other chart that we were looking at where, where you know, a big drop, all, you know, the bounce, you know, uh, uh, you know, you got all the, 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 the losses were all made up in just one giant move. And, and so now it needs to stay above the middle Bollinger Band. It has to stay above the, the uh, 300 day simple moving average. They're down here at 370 if it can st hold that level that would be that that that's what it has to do to get a new upturn going if it drops below 370 that would signal downside risk you do not want to be a bull and be holding so i would use that as your stop loss level if you notice here look how there was this falling wedge and then it broke below today it closed above the top of the former uh, descending resistance line you want to see it stay above that level and, and so yeah so this is a crucial level on the charts so we'll see if it can bust above 440 next week and then if it can you know the high close is back here in July which is about 495 or so okay let's look at CYTX so yeah this is one that, that a lot of uh, penny stock traders are uh, you know like to trade and so yeah it's heating back up again okay so you have RSI at 53 so so when when uh, you know notice that when it was running back here um, in uh, what was it October you know it made a nice little run between 30 and, and 80 you know so it had that nice push and, and when it did it, it started off below 50 on RSI and then it ended up running above 70 and, and so anytime you know and then, and then it dropped below 50 when the chart cooled down and notice a big downtrend started and it's been really bearish ever since and so it tried to get above 50 once back here and uh, when it got above the last time it closed above the middle Bollinger Band and, and, and so that that was the last time that, that RSI heated up and so basically we have the exact same move right now so so you know it broke below the middle bollinger band in october came down got above the middle bollinger band hit that 50-day simple moving average pulled back and the downtrend continued and so now we're right back where we were here in november it's back above the middle bollinger band okay so this time the 50-day simple moving average is a little higher so you've got a little room to run okay so it could run up to th three four three six which is a pretty nice gain you could still get a 15 to 20 percent gain to the next resistance level uh notice how back in october that was the big level that failed to break and the, and the downtrend continued so 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 it needs to close above the gold line at, at, at th 36, uh, 0 0.365, and then that would signal more upside potential. And, and then we'd be looking at the high close, which is uh, here at about 41 cents. And then, you know, once that 100, 100 day simple moving average turns into support, you know, then, then you're looking at it, it could run up back up to that high close in October a, 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 a around 63, 64, and the 200 day simple moving average up there at 71. So, so all, the only way that, that CYTX stays in play, if you're a bull, you know, this is a great short once it gets it below the middle Bollinger Band you can just keep riding it lower but but now it's the bulls turn it looks like but it has to stay above that middle Bollinger Band it has to stay above 26.2 if, if you see it drop below 26 it will be a risk to hold it will be a bullish change in trend if another white cloud candle forms on 
Friday or Monday because you know last time it was a white candle than a red candle. So so you're looking for signs that the middle Bollinger band is turning into support. You know, a volume is picking up. It wasn't a giant volume spike today, but but it is picking up. So that's a good sign. And, and yeah, so keep an eye on uh, CYTX. Okay, let's look here at MATN. Okay, this is another one to, to keep an eye on. Um, yeah, it, it's in a in a downtrend. Um, yeah, this is just a, a, a low volume stock. Um, it looks interesting because of the uh, candle from yesterday. Um, notice that it's it's almost a hammer here. You know, the, the, the real candle body is pretty big, so I don't think it would technically be a hammer, but it's the same. Uh, it's giving the same signal. Um, you know, you have a very long downtrend, and then you have a, a drop down to low of day at 9, and then a big uh, a, a run up off of that all the way to 11, and then you have a big, uh, vol vol you know, up to 11, and then it, and then it ended up running above the previous day close you know it, for, it formed it looks like a bullish reversal pattern here um, yeah so so basically what it's showing is if people loaded bounce players loaded down here at nine okay then, then today there was a, a big drop off in volume so so it, it you know and it was able to push higher so it looks like people are still holding we'll, we'll see if it can get above EMA 13 that's the next line 50, that, that's at 15 cents if it can get above that that would be very bullish and then it could run up here to that middle Bollinger Band at 17.3 notice how that's been big resistance get above that and you're looking at the 50 day simple moving average at 22 okay so let's look at LGCY okay this is another one that was alerted yesterday and check it out at Closed up 13 percent so so like uh, you know we, when we post videos we, we, we just try to uh, uh, you know it's just about the analysis and just uh, I'm just uh, uh, giving the uh, reading the charts that's all I'm doing and, and so yeah so, so they're, they're not all about uh, you know what stocks gonna be the next one's gonna run a lot of them are gonna be telling you oh yeah well, this is at resistance and this is where you want to be locking in gains etc okay and so that this was a chart that yesterday had the setup where it was a, a, a swing trade with, with the with the close above you know, the middle Bollinger Band and, and the 50 or 100 day simple moving average so it had a nice setup yesterday you notice how it started a downtrend in November and so so it's nice to see that it followed through that's that's what you want you want to see follow through and so this is good this is what's going on right now that there there's a lot of uh, uh, you know the, the marijuana sector and the cryptocurrency sector you know crypto stocks ha have been running very hard and, and, and so at the, the most beaten up sector is the energy sector so it's been totally pounded in 2017 and so we're getting a little bit of uh, movement here uh, at the end of the year on a lot of these penny stocks that are in the energy sector so keep that on your radar for next week the energy sector is in play L look at the big volume spikes down here notice how volume was increasing remember how I just said in the last video uh, or last chart about the big load off of the low look at the big volume spike on the 26th and 27th and then on the 27th there was that big drop off the low. They loaded heavy and then they've pushed it higher. Now, now what, what, it closed yesterday above the 100 day simple moving average at 141. And, and then the next uh, today, it, it got above the next level, which is the, the 50 day simple moving average at 147. And then it actually closed above the 200 day simple moving average at basically at 160. And, and so it also closed above the upper Bollinger Band. It could uh, cool down here and pull back and test that 50 day simple moving average. You want to see that level hold. If it did, it could still have a very strong uptrend. EMA4 is way down here at 142 where the 100 day simple moving average is at if it can stay above 160 on monday we're looking for a run up to the 300 day simple moving average at 177 and this high close at 180 you know that would that that would take it back up to that previous level okay so so keep an eye on it you know this is a nice reversal on big volume you know you have the psr bull flip down here on uh thursday and, and then uh, you notice the dots below the candles you have the uh, macd bull crosses okay so talking about heating up in the energy sector check out j-o-n-e okay so it's at 59 on on rsi it, it, it's it's been cruising you know it, it's got it, it got above the middle bollinger band last week last friday and, and then uh, this week it's continued to push higher notice how it's got this it has, has a nice uptrend going it's riding ema4 support higher it closed today above that 50-day simple moving average that was a very bullish close that does signal more upside potential that that's what we want to see that's what we love to see and notice check out the volume you know it's just 
quietly moving higher. I don't think many people have their eyes on this. Once again, you had the, the load candle down here. Um, it, what we're looking for now is a break above the 100-day simple moving average at 120, and then uh, uh, you know for, for the candles to work their way back up to the high close at 165, and this 200-day simple moving average at 156. If it fails to stay above that 50-day that simple moving average, that'll be a signal that, that it's not quite ready to go. You know, notice there's some, uh, you know, this is a, a previous top, and so it's trying to turn that level into support. It's really important that it stays above 107 next week. Okay, so let's look at CXRX. Okay, so this is heating up as well. It has RSI here at 54, you know, fast dose coming off of oversold levels off of 20. And so this stock, uh, you know, made a big move uh, back here uh, on the 14th. It had this big break above that 50-day simple moving average we were just talking about, above the green line. And then notice it came up and it filled this gap up here. So, so there was a gap fill. And then it and then it pulled back after the gap fill, and so uh, you know it was a very sharp pullback, and it started riding the 50-day simple moving average lower. It finally found support down here at 55 cents. Notice that this was the uh, near the, the the top of the previous channel. Um, yeah, so so it came down, found support, you know, off this November high high, and then and then now it, the the bullish move was the close back above EMA's 4, 8, and 13. That's the the pink line and orange lines, and back above that middle Bollinger Band at 60 cents. If it can stay above all those levels, then it could get moving next week. And, and, and we're looking for a break above 70. If it can get above 70, then you're looking at that upper Bollinger Band and uh, 775 as the next targets. You know, if that if that you know it could work its way back up to that 100-day simple moving average. We'll see if it closes. Closes below the the 150-day simple moving average in the middle Bollinger Band. That'll be a signal it's it's ready, you know, not ready to go, and it's still consolidating. Okay, let's look at ATOS. Okay, so it did close up 12% today. Keep an eye on the stock. It, it's it's trying to, uh, you know, it's got a, it has an ugly chart. Okay, so this is a really ugly chart. Um, it, it, it's been in this nasty downtrend. Um, you know, it's an ugly chart if you're a bull. Um, it, 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 it closed. The reason why I'm showing you it is it closed today above the bottom of the gap. Uh, there, there's a gap down here between the high, uh, low of day on the 19th, the bottom of this candle, and high of day on the 20th, the top of this candle, the, the, this wick on this uh, small red candle. And so, so it closed above that level today, and it also closed above EMA's four and eight for the first time since the, uh, you know, since this gap was formed. And so, th there's a possibility it could come up and fill that gap next week. So keep an eye on it. If it if it breaks above 27, that orange line, you know the 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 middle Bollinger Band at 29, and that top of the gap around 31 or so will be the next target. Um, yeah, if it can get above those, then, then maybe it could get you know close above the uh, middle Bollinger Band and finally get an uptrend going. Many times a gap fill can be a climax, so keep that in mind. Um, yeah, so let's look at DCTH. This used to trade on the big boards. And uh, yeah, it got uh, it, it was uh, demoted down to uh, the OTC. Now it's an over-the-counter stock. Um, you know they had the reverse split, so the numbers are all crazy. But but they uh, finished with some uh, financing that they had, and now they have a pretty low share structure, so it was moving uh, really freely today. Um, you know even though uh, yeah. The, the, there's been a lot of volume down here at the bottom. So so basically, it was in this nasty downtrend, found support. And then today, you know, yesterday there was a close above the EMA4. Notice how it, how it closed above the pink line. That was your clue that it was heating up. And then today it closed above that middle Bollinger Band at 56 cents. And, and, and that, that is the signal. You know, it hadn't, hasn't, you have to go off this chart to find the last close above the middle Bollinger Band. They came out with news that they, uh, you know, have, uh, you know, cleared up their debt. And, and, and then at, now it looks like, uh, you know, maybe it could run without uh, maybe some dilution. We'll see how long they can go without tuning. The, it's all up to them on how high it goes you know you know the, these types of uh, companies are their own worst enemy on their bad financing so we'll just have to see it, it, the only way this stays in play is if it stays above that middle bollinger band at 56 so that's you know that that is 0 0.56 you know that has to be the stop loss you can't hold this if it drops below that would just be pain and suffering if you are long now now the next key level to break is that ema 13 here at at, at 1174 
so so yeah, it's pretty wild. It's not uh, often that you see the middle Bollinger Band drop below EMA 13. It's pretty wild. Uh, uh, you don't see uh, very many chart setups like this. Um, so so yeah, so so if you can get above EMA 13, that would be bullish. If it fails to break that level, that's going to signal more consolidation. So keep an eye on it. Um, if you look at the 15-minute chart here for DCTH, you'll see that that it started heating up a couple days ago on the 27th. You know, it had the tight Bollinger Bands. It was turning the 50 and 100 simple moving averages into support. Along with the the Bollinger Band. And then yesterday it was really working on the, the 200, the red and the blue line, the 200 and 300 simple moving averages. But notice finally into the close yesterday, it was forming candles above all the levels. That is the bull signal. I keep, you know, everybody wants to know what is the bull signal well the bull signal is when the 15 minute ch chart turns bullish where, where the candles are above all the moving averages writing EMAs 4 and 8 support higher that's when you know the stock is in play it was giving that clue yesterday and today it had the big push it, it, it made the monster run it, it built up steam going into the close people were loading heavy um, currently you want to see EMA 4 at 0 0.084 hold if, if you see a drop below EMA 4 that's when you could see it possibly consolidate and it could drop down to the middle Bollinger Band at 0 0.068. As long as that level's holding like it did here, the uptrend's still intact. Once that middle Bollinger Band breaks, that's when you'll it'll be a signal that it's cooled down and that there'll be reload levels lower. Okay, let's look at GRSO. Okay, this is a, a marijuana sector stock. It, it closed up 48% today. So, so yeah, so keep an eye on it. Um, yeah, th there were a lot of uh, marijuana sector stocks that were uh, under pressure to end the year. Um, it was a, a, a mixed bag today. Um, some were doing well somewhere under pressure and so as you can see here it closed above the gold line and above the the, the green line so so it was holding it was turning the 50-day simple moving average into support at 0 0.034 it closed above the 100-day simple moving average at 0 0.043 it needs to stay above that level that's the first close above that level since back here in august and then it's been a really long time since it's turned into support it did break above the 200-day simple moving average intraday at 0 0.057 if it can close above that level and turn it into support it could really get moving you have the 300-day simple moving average way up here as 0.126. Notice that the really big volume behind the move. So, so yeah, so there's big volume behind this uh, thinly traded stock. Keep an eye on it. We'll see if it can push higher. Okay, thank you very much for viewing this video. Uh, if you'd like to learn more about charts and technical analysis, uh, come check out our uh, chat. I'll post the link at the uh, bottom of the YouTube channel. Okay, ha Happy New Year, everybody. Thanks for viewing.